Hello Fritz fans and Dairy Products of All Ages, this is Cheese of Ages here reviewing more Kinetosis archetypes because I started a series, I should keep on it. I meant to review uh, one of these when it came out, or uh, pretty much at the same time I put out the last video, uh, but things happened. Uh, but another one has come out since then that also needs to be talked about, so I'll just hop on that as well. So. Congratulations, kineticist, I mean, like, Elemental Annihilators specifically. You're no longer the sole contender for worst kineticist archetype. You're not the worst outright anymore, and you have company amongst the worst archetypes in the entire game. That's right, from the supplements, Hero of the Darklands comes the Blight Burner, which is a blight upon the class that takes burn, so it's a blight on the burner. Bad joke. I'll see myself out later, but I have to finish this video first. Let's go ahead and just hit it, so we can quit. The flavor description. Dark Lens geokineticists sometimes exhibit supernatural powers associated with blight burn crystals. Blight burner kineticists harness this radioactivity in pyrotechnic displays. An unusual feat for those connected to the element of Earth. So, wow, a radiation kineticist. Cool. I'm all on board with this. Wait a minute. I said this was in contention for one of the worst archetypes in the entire game. Oh. Anyway, radiation themed kineticist, specifically out of a setting called the Dark Lands. And it has a lot of problems. It doesn't start off too bad, but it quickly becomes bad. Its first ability is Earth Focus. Essentially, you have to take Earth as your elemental focus, which isn't too bad. I mean, most of its good utility shit doesn't come along until, like, later levels, so it's been much better as a secondary or tertiary element. But it does have access to the uh, good combat maneuver... Uh, infusions like bowling infusion, which can trip make uh, trip attempts happen on your Eldritch Blasts, not Eldritch Blasts, Kinetic Blast, sorry, it's like Warlock for some reason. So, it's not a terrible uh, element at all. So that's not bad. Uh, Blight Burn Manipulation is the second ability. And this still actually is good, because uh, it trades off your basic geokinesis wild talent that you would normally get from your elemental focus, which all that really does is enable you to cast the sift spell at will. And well, I don't think it covers the penalty, but it might, so don't quote me on that. But being able to search from a few squares away is useful in the case of traps, but this isn't too much of a power decrease, uh, depending on whether or not you have a rogue. If you don't have a rogue, then, you know, sift is nice. Uh, but anyway, this essentially uh, trades sift, the sift cantrip for the light cantrip, and also gives you the additional ability to be a microwave. I, I'm, not I'm not kidding. You cook meat and vegetable matter at a rate of a pound a minute. Oh, and also you can uh, give people minor radiation burns, but it takes a minute to apply a point of non-lethal damage, so that's pretty much completely useless. But yeah, blight burn manipulation is not bad as a replacement for basic geokinesis. But now we've gone past the stuff that's good. Radiation absorption is the next thing. The Utility Wild Talent gained at second level is traded for this. Uh, whenever you would take ability damage specifically and solely from radiation, you can accept a point of burn to reduce the ability damage by four points. And this doesn't seem to ever increase, and the remaining ability damage is still applied. So essentially, you're taking two points of constitution uh, damage, though it doesn't apply to anything else, like a like a very weaker, much reduced form of constitution damage. 
to not take a village score damage to other scores or as much to constitution. So it's like taking a fourth of four points of like ability damage ish and pow a general power uh, as opposed to four, a full. But I don't care if the utility, a second level utility wild talents available to a, a earth geneticist are relatively mediocre. They apply everywhere. This Unless you're in a campaign that's frequently exposed to radiation, it doesn't do anything. If this said like ability damage from energy based attacks, like it would work against Rave Enfeeblement, then it's actually a pretty good ability maybe, even then it's still very contextual because not every caster has Rave Enfeeblement. If you go against a lot of necromancers, it could subjectively be better. But even then, it would quickly fall out of favor as, like, they shifted use of Bestow Curse. <laughs> it's just not very good. And this Blightburn Aura, it doesn't say anywhere here about trading off your defensive wild talent, though I may be not reading far enough down. Ah, here we go. Yeah, it does. So, this is basically a... This Blightburn Aura. Uh, you replace the ability score boost granted from Elemental Overflow, which makes you really bad at being an Earth Kineticist because they need those ability score boosts to like make the most use of their element. Uh, and that also makes it where... Uh, the benefits of your radiation resistance to ability score damage is completely negated because your ability scores are now lower. So now your second level ability doesn't do anything at all, uh, effectively. Except in a, like, not only is it a niche case, now it's a niche case of when you're not suffering burn, now it does something. But if you're at a certain level of burn where you would normally have ability score boosts, now it does nothing. Congratulations. So, you lose your ability score boosts gained by elemental overflow and your elemental defensive ability, but it doesn't keep you from learning other elemental defenses. Now, Earth's elemental defense isn't all that fabulous. Uh, let me refresh my memory on that real quick. Because yeah, I may be misremembering. I should have done this before the video, but it's kind of a narrow topic. Uh, can I assist elements? Slap up the SRD. Blasts, defensive wild talents. Uh, okay. Skin hardens like stone, dampening the impact of most attacks. You get damage reduction 1 adamantine, increasing by 1 for every 2 kinetics levels you possess by a beyond uh, second, so uh, 2 at 4. Uh, and the increasing is uh, 1 point of DR per point of burn. Uh, up to a maximum DR equal to your kineticist level. Uh, when you accept burn while using an energy wild talent, the energy surging causes your damage reduction to not be bypassed by anything for a round. So it's very freaking mediocre, but you can deploy it as an immediate action like a lot of other defensive talents. So you're not trading off something enormously huge, we'll say. But it's something. Uh, okay. What's the Blightburn Aura do? At second level, Blightburner's body surges with a greenish radioactive glow whenever she accepts burn. This energy has, sheds light like a candle, and any uh, body hitting a Blightburner with a natural attack or an arm strike or a non reach melee weapon while she's under the effect of the Blightburn Aura takes fire damage equal to the elemental overflow bonus. Minimum one. 
uh, accepting two points of burn, you can increase the damage by an amount of equal to her elemental overflow bonus. Uh, she can increase the damage in this way up to four times. Okay, so it's basically a slightly superior version of the fire talent. Uh, your elemental overflow bonus would be third level it's plus one six at sixth so early on it's not really worth spending burn into because that's just two points it starts becoming possibly decent at sixth where you can just slap uh, four damage on people uh, if you increase it by spending burn and then it comes every third level increases by another one point eventually becoming freaking six points at level 18. But at that point, like, how many times can you increase that again? You can increase it up that way up to four times. So increasing four points of burn, you can actually have a very scathing amount of defense. And that is just completely maintained. But that's a lot of burn to take to increase that damage. That's two points of burn per increase with no may to mitigate that. So I'm just going to say that's not very good. Yeah, not very good at all. Uh, but somewhat decent. Uh, otherwise it works pretty much like elemental overflow. And you know, the fact that you can suppress it. At sixth level... Whenever the Blackburn has three points of burn, the Blackburn Orf uh, expands to fill all adjacent squares, damaging all creatures that end their turn within the area. Okay, so that becomes more energy efficient to where, like with one application of burn, you increase it by one time, and if you have one more point of burn from something else, you just burn everything around you with like th freaking four points of damage, which is decent, actually. However, that also hits allies, so you've got to be really particularly careful. At 11th level, it's a 10-foot radius aura, meaning anybody attempting to flank with you will take the damage. And make a fortitude save or be sickened for a round, being a poison effect. So congratulations. My alarm is going off. If you have four points of burn, now you are a detriment to the party. Congratulations. <laughs> a ten-foot radius aura is, the, uh, is most of the average dungeon room, unless it's a big, huge battlefield area. Because that's ten-foot... That's basically a 25 by 25 room. And you irradiate the entire thing. With, if you have the five points of burn, both of which uh, from increasing it twice, and this is at 11th level, let's see what your elemental would be. Anybody in that room is going to be taking six points of damage. Like, every round. While being in the room with you. Anyone within 20 fucking 10 feet of you. And at 25 by 25 square is going to be taking 6 points of damage and be possibly be sickened. So yeah, if you want to continuously poison your party, huzzah. This gets worse at 16th level, in which the radius doesn't increase, but at 7 points of burn, it also becomes fatigued in addition to being sickened, in addition to at this point, uh, the elemental overflow bonus is at... Uh, uh, They'll be taking 10 damage around. Well, at this point, it becomes like somewhat irrelevant because the party will typically have like triple-digit hit points on the lower end of triple-digit hit points unless they're a barbarian. It's still like, okay, if they're in the room with you for 10 rounds, they, they, you know, they're gonna freaking fall unconscious. <laughs> this is not the worst thing ever but Jesus <laughs> that creates complications 
Okay, last ability change. Alters gather power and internal buffer. Okay. Radiation resistance. At 6th level, you become resistant to all forms of radiation and can use the radiation's energy as gathered power. She gains a bonus on saving throw to resist the effects of radiation equal to her elemental overflow bonus. Okay, so I, I can already tell in advance that this is going to be kind of shit. Because this is uh, like replacing gather power and internal buffer and is turning resistance to radiation, turning radiation energy into gathered power. So I can already tell this is going to be complete shit. Okay, so a saving throw bonus that's only useful against radiation. If you succeeded to save against radiation, you can reduce the total boom cost of blast wild talent used before the end of next turn as if you had gathered power with a move action. Okay, I'm gonna give this the benefit of the doubt. There's still a third of the paragraph left. Just recover this. Once she gains this benefit, she can't do it again for a minute. Even if she's exposed to radiation again before that, she can't use this ability if she's immune to poison or radiation. She gains eternal buffer at 11th level, and it has a capacity as if she were five levels lower. I should have readied a puke bucket. Okay. So this ability is completely useless if you're outside of radiation. It's also inferior to gather power if you're inside radiation. And also for no goddamn reason you uh, lose internal buffer until 11th level and it's still kind of shitty compared to regular internal buffer. What about this ability that is useless outside of radiation and worse than gather power outside and inside radiation by an enormous margin even if you are constantly every turn having to make saves against radiation which is killing the rest of the party probably what about that warrants also nerfing eternal bu internal buffer what? Uh, complete garbage ability is there with radiation resistance complete freaking useless garbage so let's go down the freaking list of uh, the abilities earth focus neutral it's okay blood burn manipulation okay that's actually debatably better but you know power neutral so power neutral power neutral radiation absorption Mostly useless. Blightburn Aura. Okay, but we'll just call that power neutral. Because while it all hinders your party, it's not crippling, and, uh, really. Uh, and it's okay. Uh, but that's barely at all. No, no, that's not power neutral. We're not calling that power neutral. Because I briefly forgot there then it also takes away the ability score boost granted by elemental overflow so you're squishier because you can't pump your constitution uh, while you're taking shit tons of burn and poisoning your party that's just a shit ability so we're about refresher power neutral power neutral sh complete shit complete shit complete and utterly useless garbage like seven layers of complete shit yeah this is the worst as a stark type while the elemental annihilator is worse at its specialty than the base kineticist and thus fails completely in every way on an archetype this is this archetype doesn't even do anything outside of radiation and is like actively hurts your party this is by far the worst kineticist archetype. By a country goddamned mile. So let's go to the other end of the spectrum, to Kinetic Knight, one of the best archetypes for the kineticist. Now, the main overall thing with the Kinetic Knight is it's a melee specialist. You're trading a lot of damage. 
because you're like not getting any AOEs. Uh, if you're not uh, in an element that gets a lot of AOE specialization, and especially if that non-AOE specialization archetype uh, doesn't have a good elemental defense, it's actually a really good archetype. Uh, however, you do trade a, uh, a lot of long-range mobility, uh, though this does get some good early short-range mobility. You can't use ranged shit, so you can't use the, like, uh, Category 4 Tornado Wind Speed Flight uh, that can be granted from uh, Ride the Blast at later levels. And you're also, like... Your AoEs are much smaller and come a lot later than AoE-focused archetypes get their AoEs. So your damage overall will be lower. However, you get a lot of tankiness for it. And uh, you can use your elemental blade uh, quicker before like 5th level without taking burn. So it's, a, it's actually a pretty decent archetype. And you get a lot of these melee-oriented uh, infusions from the... Uh, Psychic Anthology Supplement, this, this comes from uh, a few levels sooner than you would normally get them. While I personally still think that Default Kineticist is a better melee kineticist, if you want to trade some uh, your range capabilities completely uh, for tankiness, it's a viable alternative. It's one of those things where it could be something if you want to specialize in this. Although it's not a better melee kineticist than the default kineticist, so it kind of fails to specialize. Its specialization is tankiness, in truth. That's the main focus. Some people would think that it's a melee-focused kinetic archetype, but no. It's mostly just tankiness. Uh, it's its main power. Uh, but anyway, kinetic knight. Flavor text. A kinetic knight dons armor and wields a blade of elemental energy. The phoenix kindred counted many of these resolute warriors amongst their number, combining the recursion tablets as secrets with the warrior's ways. Today, most remaining Tian kinetic knights follow the philosophy of Ichimeho. Kinetic knights are rare in the inner sea region, but not unknown. Many realize their elemental powers while training for battle. And let's just, like, uh, set outright that this is a better melee kineticist archetype than the Elemental Annihilator. Although the Elemental Annihilator can still switch hit, so that's debatable in some people's eyes. The main reason this is better is it doesn't trade any Eldritch Blast damage. At least in my opinion. It also doesn't give away nearly as much. You know, the Elemental Annihilator pretty much just throws everything away to get worse damage in melee. So let's break this down. Courtly is the first ability. You trade Acrobatics and Stealth, two of the best skills in the game, for Diplomacy and Sense Motive, which are good for social interaction, uh, so social perception, and uh, Diplomacy. Diplomacy being one of the more powerful skills in the game. If this weren't an armor-focused archetype, which is typically going to be wearing heavy armor all the time, acro this would be about power and nerf, but considering in heavy armor you're not going to be acrobatic or stealthing at all anyway, I'll call this power neutral. Uh, elemental Blade. At first level, you get the stereotypical uh, infusion I specialize in using uh, is reduced cost uh, specialization because Kinetic Blade no longer costs anything. However, you can't use your Kinetic Blast without the Kinetic Blade form infusion or an infusion that builds out of it. So you can't use any AoEs at all. Not, not even like freaking the mo the monk kineticist can use like freaking cone effects and shit like that. This one can't freaking use it at all. You have no range capability whatsoever, which is trading a lot. Anyway, at third level you gain blade rush infusion. At fifth level you gain kinetic whip, which is a decent like you get each of these a couple levels sooner than you would normally get them. Uh, your kinetic whip gains the disarm performance and trip weapon qualities, all of which are pretty much useless. Uh, at ninth level you gain the Blade Whirlwind Infusion, which is basically Whirlwind Attack with the Kinetic Blade, can't be used with the Whip, until 11th level, which you get Whip Hurricane. At 13th level is Swift Action, you can accept two points of burn to unleash a Kinetic Blast with the Blade Rush Infusion. 
So these take uh, alter kinetic blast and infusions and replaces metakinesis and metakinetic master. So you lose all your metakinesis to get these sooner and uh, retain a weakened form of the quickened infusion, uh, enabling you to, like, as a swift action, essentially do a teleport charge. Uh, as a standard action, it's 30 foot teleport next to an enemy and hit them as a free action, which is pretty decent. It's decent mobility. Uh, mind you, it's less mobility than you would get from uh, a default kineticist at 13th level with Quickened Ride the Blast by a large margin. But, yeah. Uh, the phrasing of this is slightly confusing because it says it alters kinetic blast and infusions. Uh, but then a later ability says that uh, something uh, that you get replaces the infusion gained at 3rd level and supercharge. So, whether this completely replaces the infusions you would get at those levels normally is debatable. Um, if it would, then it's eh. Uh, it's decent to get these a little earlier, but overall the default kineticist's infusion options at these points are debatably a little bit more better for versatility's sake and damage output because some archetypes can select, not archetypes, but elements can select AoEs here at these points. Uh, so yeah. If it doesn't replace the infusions you get at those levels and you can still pick infusions at those levels, then this is powerful as fuck. But I'll rule in the favor if, if it replacing them, uh, but uh, the uh, other ability later that you get uh, and at the same time as you would get the blade rush thing is an exception. Though if there's a rata, you know my opinion on the other ruling. <laughs> so, potentially powerful as fuck, but like somewhat debatably power neutral depending on element otherwise. Kinetic Warrior. Kinetic Knight can use your constitution score in favor of, and in place of intelligence score when qualifying for combat feats. And this counts as having combat expertise for the purposes of feet prerequisites. This is super goddamn nice because that means you can just straight go into combat maneuver feats without freaking worrying about taking combat expertise, which is feet tax. No one ever uses combat expertise for its actual benefit, really. I'm sure some people do. <laughs> yeah, it's hyperbole. Really. Hyperbole. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is actually really freaking great. It saves you a, a piece of feet for that. But it also leads me to believe that the official ruling on kinetic blasts, uh, kinetic infusions, uh, being able to apply combat maneuver feats, regardless of, like, essentially this basically seems to insinuate a very, very, very indirectly and debatably uh, the point that the Elemental Annihilator's uh, special infusion is needed to use combat maneuvers with it. Because this doesn't do anything uh, to, like, say you count as wielding it, but has something, uh, a ability that's solely for taking combat maneuver feats. Uh, and combat expertise is something where if you're, if you're atta making attacks, you get, you know, this benefit. You know, so this seems to indicate that the, you know, pretty much the only thing that the uh, Elemental Annihilator does for the Kinetic Blade is may enable you to mm, use uh, get Vital Strike with it, and that all other feats don't require it. But that's just a very, very indirect insinuation. So, don't take that as, like, complete canon, or me using this as complete proof. It just seems to insinuate that. Very, very indirectly. So, yeah. That's actually very powerful, and it doesn't directly trade off anything, so we're gonna consider that as a extra boost to something that might be power uh, decrease. Which, going back, will include it in the third level 
thing because if that doesn't uh, if that does take if the bonus infusions you get do take up infusion slots that it does impede your ability to take combat maneuver infusions a little bit uh, there's still slots in which you could take them but in order to get them early uh, at any point before like freaking yeah it delays it considerably uh, so you'd need to take a feat to take a combat maneuver uh, freaking infusion uh, if these take up the infusion slots so I need to look up a rata for that and put it as an annotation uh, but we'll consider, consider a kinetic warrior a buff to that uh, to compensate for that little decrease it makes it easier to take combat maneuver feats because it's a little harder to take infu combat maneuver infusions Nice little trade-off, I suppose. Helps reduce the sting of that. Elemental Bastion is the next ability, though, that we'll go into. It replaces, well, alters Elemental Defense. And this is pretty much good across the board. For every element that has a bad Elemental Defense, every element but water with varying levels of shit, it replaces that. Big, by giving you proficiency with medium and heavy armor and shields, except for tower shields, and the ability to augment that armor in a similar fashion to the water defense. Uh, by accepting a point of burn to attune yourself to that armor, uh, uh, to the shield specifically, until the next time your burn is removed, uh, and shields don't impede your ability to gather power like they normally would and you gain elemental defense ability at fourth level rather than second and it can only be used while wearing heavy armor and wearing an attuned shield this uh, makes every other elemental defense a little bit better because now it's an accessory to your defensive boost rather than your defensive boost this is really good this amplifies your the tankiness of all elements considerably uh, and expanded defense is also uh, follows the same restrictions as your normal elemental defense, where it only works with your attuned armor. And also, this makes an accommodation for Shroud of Water, since Shroud of Water operates similarly to this. If you have Shroud of Water, whenever its bonus would be increased upon accepting burn, you instead increase the enhancement bonus of your armor or a attuned shield by an equal amount. So. Every element gets a lot tankier, including water, which gets a lot tankier. So yeah, this is the specialization of the archetype, being super goddamn tanky. Uh, it's not like focused on being an elemental, I mean I'm a melee elementalist, it just like gets elemental infused specializations, uh, which you could take normally. It's all real benefit comes in tankiness. Okay. So that's actually a really good ability. Knight's Resolve. At third level, instead of getting the third level infusion, because this replaces the third level infusion gained at third level, but you still get a third level infusion. It's confusing. It also replaces Supercharge, which is eh. Uh, it's okay. It's not a huge loss. It's, it's a loss. Don't get me wrong, it's not an enormous one. Uh, third level, the Kinesis gets the Samurai's Resolve class feature as a Samurai if your Kinesis level minus two. And at 11th level, she gains the Samurai's Greater Resolve ability. She also has Samurai levels to stack. So that's, eh, that's okay. I mean, it's worth the third level infusion slot, I'd say. So, yeah. It's pretty good, especially considering you still get a level 3 infusion, which is confusing. I can't find, like, consistent Toretto on this, because, like, it's, it's weird. Because, like, this gives you infusion, says it alters them, but doesn't say it replaces them. But something else further down says it replaces one of the things that it alters. But you still get the thing. It's confusing. That little thing knocks its score down a few pegs, but overall, this is a really good archetype. 
It's trades ranged capability for tankiness and a faster uh, melee skill progression. So, yeah. And you do get later decent AoE potential. So, like, for some archetypes, the amount of, like, damage is not as bad because some uh, archetypes don't, uh, not archetypes, but elements don't get quick access to AoEs. Uh, and even then, for, like, fire, which gets AoEs really quickly, uh, you get a lot of more benefit than some other elements that uh, lack AoEs and have slightly better defensive infusions because you've got a major increase in viability to your uh, defensive wild talent. And fire element kind of suits this decently, uh, the defensive talent decently, because now you're super tanky and your uh, defensive wild talent that's flaming based, not uh, on you and relies on you taking hits is now bolstered by the fact that your defenses are higher so you can take hits easier. So yeah, this is actually a very well thought out and well designed archetype that does what an archetype is supposed to do and that's trade power for something else. You know, either specialize in something at the cost of other things or grant benefits at the cost of other power. This is a very well designed archetype and is up there with the better ones. Uh, it's a little bit more generally tiny bit, little bit, a bit more generally accessible than the Psychokineticist, but the Psychokineticist is still, in my opinion, a little bit better, but only in the sense that the default Kineticist has generalized power uh, that's just a bit better than the Kinetic Knight. Kinetic Knight still has its benefits, though. It's still powerful in the sense that it's tanky. It's powerful in a different way. Uh, the power of specialty uh, at the cost of generality. But generally, just sheer power, the default kinesis is better than it. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, that's my opinion. And the psychic kinesis is only like, better than this from the fact that it's pretty much just the default kineticist. <laughs> but, yeah. My opinion, Kinetic Knight up there tied with psychic kinesis. I would not argue if you said it was the best. Uh, so yeah. So we had like a contender for best and a contender for worst and a contender for one of the worst archetypes in the entire game. So yeah, we had a lot of different stuff today. Okay, so that's pretty much the, uh, all the kinetic archetypes I'm aware of existing. If you know of more existing, feel free to let me know about them. I'll find them, review them, and we'll like enjoy. Uh, there's still the Royal Dancer from Dreams Guard Press, Path of Warpath. Uh, but I did a touch on review of that, and that's third party content, so I'm not going to review it here, especially considering this video is nearly an hour long now. Uh, expect another video at some point today, uh, as I'm going to do another video on recent like League of Legends uh, content that's changed uh, in regards to like assassins and stuff. Uh, there's the upcoming itemization changes that have inspired me to make discussion of it. So anyway, until then, this will be Cheese of Ages signing off. I'll be sighing off in the next video. <laughs> Possibly. Anyway, bye bye